I'm ready to talk about things. Now? You ready to talk now? We're part of the moonlight. Ain't a fan to say. Can't be in sunlight. Hello, beautifuls. This is Aromi here. Welcome back to Changeling. We're here. Just getting out of the car with Spencer after seeing some black shadow blob guy. Again. Great. Spencer didn't ask any more questions, not yet. But I knew all these little incidents were stacking up. That conversation was definitely on the horizon. He went inside first and I soon followed, but neither of us got far. When I reached the entrance, Spencer was standing just inside, staring at the scene before him. What on earth? There was trash everywhere. Lockers were open, contents were strewn across the hall. Students and teachers alike were wading through the mess, cleaning up and trying to sort out what belonged where. Whoa. Vandals. I glanced at a group of students nearby who were surveying the mess with dismay. Vandals? Really? I heard the chairs in the cafeteria were stacked up on the tables like crazy stacked. The cafeteria? All the chairs in the classroom were stacked too, the, through the whole school. Could a person really do something like this? I let out a long, slow breath, though like tear. Excuse me, can you please move? Oh, hey, Mark. A familiar figure was lurking behind me, looking annoyed at me for daring to take too much entry space. I rubbed my eyes and stepped aside to allow him in. He, like everyone else, stared at the mess. Guess it's possible to surprise even a vampire. Vandals, apparently. Is that so? That's the running theory. I see. He stepped around me and started to, into the fray. If you had anything important in your locker, you may wish to stop standing there and go retrieve it. Good point. I hurried that way, and sure enough, it had been open as well. Fortunately, I cleaned out all but the essentials after the last break-in. The only things I had to retrieve were my books and a few stray pens. I spot another familiar person not far off. William! I dumped everything in my locker and made my way through the mess to him. They got your locker too. Yeah. Oh, his locker was completely trashed. It wasn't just rifled through or open, or the contents dragged out. Everything was ripped to shreds. Uh, uh, offer to help him clean up? Can I help clean this mess up? He didn't look up at me at all. It just shook his head, keeping it tilted down so his hair fell into it fell in his eyes and obscured his face are you sure he was silent a moment i bit my lip worriedly as i watched him something was definitely bothering him well given the state of his locker it was obvious that obvious what it was but his reaction made me feel there was definitely something else going on here i didn't want to ask if he was okay because that's a common obvious answer he's not okay but okay william are you okay Yes, he didn't look up at me, his hair was hanging in his face, particularly obscuring his expression, but he seemed really tense. I, um, I texted you earlier. He looked up then, and I was instantly struck by his expression. Sc sad, scared, very, very worried. Something was wrong. I took a step closer to him, hesitantly. Are you sure everything was okay? Yes, it's fine. I didn't believe that at all. It wasn't fine. Something was bothering him, but I knew that tone of voice. He wasn't going to tell me what it was. Is this related to miss haunts or something the only time he really clammed up like that was when it was something to do with things guests and vials should handle then again he'd eventually told me about missing haunts maybe he'd eventually tell me about this too okay i understand he shot me a surprised look but i just smiled faintly i understand i wanted to be sure he knew that i i knew something was wrong that i was accepting his answer only because i knew it was serious and not because i believed him oh okay Willem bent to pick up more of his stuff, what was left of it anyway. As he straightened, something fell from his pocket and landed softly on the pile of shredded paper at his feet. I immediately recognized it. He's been holding that the whole time? The spirits are gonna be fucking mad, William! The amulet he, he used to keep his ghost buddies away. He must have been out with guests this morning. No wonder he hadn't responded to Tex. I bent to pick it up for him, but he snatched it before I could get to it and shoved it in his locker. William? He backed away from me, then slammed the locker shut and fled. I need to find Gas. What the heck? No, I think he held that for the longest. He hasn't been taking that off of him, I don't think. I wasn't sure what to make of his behavior, but something dawned on me as I watched him go. Everyone was saying the destruction at the school was vandals, but human vandals? It'd be William's ghost. He'd been working with Gus a lot and using the amulet to keep them out of his hair, I assumed. But well, they really trashed the whole school in rage because he kept them at bay for a few afternoons. Though I couldn't deny his locker was in an even worse state than everyone else's. If that's the case, I really hope he's not blaming himself for all this. I decided to follow and see if I could at least get an update on the ghost situation. For better or worse, I felt connected to it given everything that had happened. 
I made it all the way up to the fourth floor and nearly to the club when I find when I heard an annoying familiar voice calling after me. Ugh, really? What do you want, Spencer? He stopped at the moment I turned, almost like a deer in headlights, before he shoved his hand in his pockets and continued the rest of the way to me. Impatient as I was getting uh, uh, impatient as I was about to, uh, bleh, I <laughs> impatient as I was to get to the club, I stopped and waited for him. Not like I could go to the magical club with him. Uh, to the magical club room with him right there anyway. What's wrong? I was thinking, I mean, after this morning with everything happening, I'm ready to talk about things. Now? You ready to talk now? Why did brothers always have the absolute worst time for everything? I grabbed his wrist and dragged him away from the club room. He followed without protest until we rounded a corner into a disused hallway. What are you doing? I said I want to talk. It took you long enough? I want to talk. Yes. Yes, I heard that. It took you long enough. But call me cr- cr What? But call me crazy, what? He gave me a scathing look, stopping from using that word. I don't think the hall is the best place for the, that particular discussion, especially not this hallway. Don't make me change my mind about this. Hey, your answers are at stakes, as well as if you change your mind in a huff. Hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, so quite impressed by your scathing or scathing wit. In case you didn't realize it, class is starting in a few minutes. I don't think we're going to have time to have that conversation unless you want a highly abridged version. Then when can we do it? I don't want to do it at home. Good question. If home wasn't an option, then our choices were limited, especially considering we couldn't talk after school since he had work. Let's do it tomorrow morning. We'll ride, the, ride to school together and talk in the car. As an added bonus, no one gets to escape, no matter what's said. Spencer made a face at that. I cast a look toward the club and decided to just go back downstairs for now. There is barely any time left anyway. Let's get out of here. This place creeps me out. Spencer gave me a curious look. What? I don't know what you think is really going on, but this spooky stuff can still creep me out. Okay? It's just that after what I saw last that was after, after what I saw that night, I thought you'd be less easy to spook. Well, you're wrong. We walked down the stairs together, which was weird. It had been so long since we had a normal relationship that any semblance of it just felt weird. Like we'd forgotten how. It was uncomfortable, awkward, and it made me wonder if we'd fix anything at all just by talking about it split up at the bottom and i was left wondering how the heck i was going to handle that conversation so this is a good development i think everything okay i started and spun around rolling my eyes at Allie. don't do that to me didn't mean to startle you so you and since we're together not arguing yeah i guess he's ready to talk you know about all the things oh dear yeah so that's going to be happening well i guess it's a good thing he approached you reasonably he was reasonable right yeah, weirdly so. I'm kind of worried. I mean, we never came up with an actual plan for talking to him. Sometimes you don't need a plan. You just need to go with the flow. Is it always this crazy for Samhain? No. Fortunately, I mean, everything else aside, there's not usually a cranky Spencer to deal with. <laughs> Very funny. The warning bell rang and I hopped aside as we started to class. Didn't I expect things to be this frustrating? Well, running face first into a headless person with an encore performance by a handsy spriggan did kind of give me an inkling. You're definitely suffering a record-breaking level of annoyances. A near-kidnapping, sleepwalking, suspicious brother, near-death experience. I feel like I need a bingo card of annoyingly supernatural experiences. I probably have a bingo by now. Oh, we should start doing that with the new club members. Yeah, mystery club. <laughs> mystery is club bingo does not sound like something new club members are going to be into when, we, when it includes kidnapping and near-death experiences. Look, let's meet up at lunch and you can rehearse what you're going to say. Any practice? Oh, sorry, any. And practice running in those heels if things go badly. Wait, I'm wearing heels? We agree to talk in the car so no one can escape. Sorry, I'm not helping you practice sleeping out of moving vehicle. <laughs> you're no help at all. I hope you know. When we reached literature, we found the class kind of in a chaos. Um, not only was everyone talking about the locker incident, but apparently our seats had been reassigned. No, I didn't want a different partner. I scanned the room for William, but he hadn't arrived yet. Chewing my lip anxiously, I checked the desk to find my new seat. Oh, great! <laughs> it's Mark. Her oh, great is more sad, but I'm quite happy. Because I believe Mark is the guy we're going to go after next of William. You needn't look so disappointed. I'm not entirely thrilled by the seat change either. Ugh, I specifically chose not to sit by this guy. 
It slid into my desk, sulking. I like sitting by William. Why were we having a seat change now? I've been looking forward to reading the next play with him, and now I was going to sit by Sir Snarky Pants. I mean, not that I didn't appreciate good snark, but ugh. I'm not entirely thrilled to have a reading partner this time around either, but you can at least make some level of effort to conceal your obvious disappointment. I'm sorry, did my obvious disappointment hurt your feelings? Not particularly. Then I suppose it doesn't matter if I'm disappointed or not. He's already getting started. How fun. Mark leaned cl slightly closer, lowering his voice. His eyes are practically drilling a hole in my face. You may disagree, but it'll probably be better for you not to sit by William any longer anyway. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> you know, I understand why everyone outside the club talks about him, though I don't like or agree with it. What, can't, what I can't understand is why everyone inside the club avoids him too. Did it not occur to you that it's because of that... That's his preference? Or because it's what's best for everyone? Well, he's never told me he prefers to be left alone. In fact, I get the feeling it's the opposite. There are times when what one prefers has more to do with what they know is best than it does with what they want on a personal level. Yeah, well, that doesn't make sense. Or did you really think of this morning's events were really caused by ordinary vandals? Everyone, please find your seat and settle down. I was barely listening as Miss Roberts started discussing the new play we'd be starting. So it wasn't you and Vandals. Or was Mark just guessing? No. Well, the way Willem was acting, my earlier guess had probably been right. But even so, what did that have to do with me spending time with William? And why is it Mark's business anyway? I was just glad we didn't start any actual reading because I was already annoyed at my new partner and was going to do my best to ignore his existence entirely. When lunch rolled around, I went straight to the cafeteria, hoping to find William. To my disappointment, he wasn't anywhere in sight. I loitered in the doorway for some time before I went upstairs to the club, wondering if I'd find him there. But when I got to the club room, no one was there either. Hmm. Well, that's right. Allie, I was supposed to meet her for lunch, too. I had no idea where she ate at lunch, and we hadn't talked about where to meet up. I hadn't seen her down by the cafeteria. She wasn't here. Maybe the library talking to Vilos or something? Gonna hurt to look. As I did this super secret magic knock, I realized it was my first time doing it on my own. I hope that was right. I had no idea what happened if you screwed up and did the knock wrong. But it would be really unfortunate if I opened it straight into someone's bedroom while they were changing or something. Pfft, no one is dumb enough to have their room connected to the school. I opened the door and peeped in with extra caution anyway. Fortunately, it was just the library on the other side. I was going to head straight in, but I realized there was two figures standing near Vilos' desk talking. Both had their backs to me, but I recognized Guess and Willem right away. What were you thinking? I just want I wanted to be able to talk to her. Oh, shit. Okay, we still have time. I know that. I know what you wanted. But we don't always get what we want. You know that. I want you to stay on your guard today. This could get a lot worse. I know... And more than anything, we can't afford to have them acting up right now. With the sentinels gone, you know you're already in danger. What? William's in danger? I realized I was eavesdropping on two freaking psychics and probably only got away with it because they were distracted. So I quickly backed out of the library and back to the club. I shut the door quickly, wondering what on earth William could have done to have guests tell him off. This was William, after all. He didn't exactly have troublemaker stamped on him. I hadn't heard enough of the conversation to really make sense of what was going on, but... William was in danger. How? And why? What was going to get worse? Ugh. I felt so out of the loop on, all, on it all. On top of everything. I still didn't know where Ollie was. I went and flopped on the sofa, pulling my legs up to my chest. My phone chimed as almost as soon as I sat down. A message from Allie. Hey, I'm so sorry. Vela's pulled me out of class to check on something and we went back. And we won't be back until after lunch. Is everything okay with you? Yeah, I'm fine. Darn. We'll talk after school. Sorry. Stop apologizing, it's fine. Alice would still talk after school. Not that I really thought rehearsing what I was going to say to Spencer would help. The door to the library opened and I quickly turned, trying not to look guilty of eavesdropping. It was William that entered. William, hi. I they walked past without looking my way and disappeared into the hall. Did he just ignore me? No, this was William. He wouldn't do that intentionally. He had just been distracted, most likely lost in thought and all that. Probably. Fuck! <laughs> what are you doing to me? I'm gonna stop here though. Because I honestly do not know what to do. So we're probably gonna have to like pick a choice, load it back up if it's wrong. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.